So here we're going to take a look at the process of using the best camera settings for weddings. And I'm going to assume that you have a DSLR. I like to use the Canon 5D Mark III, but I started off on the Canon 7D and have even used the Canon T3i. So any of these cameras are great options and there are slight differences in them, but all of them are going to allow you to use manual controls, which is ideal when capturing beautiful images for the weddings. So the first camera setting that I want to change, and this is perhaps one of the most important settings, is the frame rate. And we want to make sure that we're shooting at 60 frames per second because we're going to be changing it to slow motion in post. Most people tend to shoot at 24 frames per second, and so the great thing about shooting at 60 frames per second is that we're then able to later make it slow motion by converting it to 24 and it allows us to get the type of style that we're going for. The first thing that I tend to do when approaching a shot is getting the correct exposure. There's three different functions on our camera that affect the exposure. One is the ISO, the other is the shutter speed, and then finally the aperture. The aperture is the amount of light that the lens that you have will let in. So different lenses allow you to let more or less light in, but we can control the range that our lens is in by adjusting the aperture. So the lower the number on the aperture, the more light is going to be let in to your camera. For the most part, we want to keep the aperture open because not only this does this allow for a shallower depth of field, which generally speaking looks more artistic, more professional, but it also allows us to shoot in darker lighting. Now, we don't want to have our up aperture all the way open, if possible, because it's going to make the image often too soft and we're going to see blurring on the edges of the pixels. The aperture is something to play around with, but generally speaking, we want to have it at least a stop above lowest possible. The shutter speed is going to control the amount of motion blur that we see in a given shot. If you have a lot of movement in your shot, for example, if you're shooting the reception, there's a lot of dancing, people moving their arms around, and you're also spinning the camera around them, then having a higher shutter speed, usually above 100 is what I go with, then is going to be a good option because you're going to reduce the motion blur in comparison to if you were shooting at 60, at 1 over 60. And we can see here in this example that when we have the shutter speed high, as there's a lot of motion, we still get a crisp image, whereas if we were to reduce the shutter speed, we're going to see a lot more motion blur if we're having a lot of motion in our shot. The downside to turning up the shutter speed is that we're going to need a lot more light because the image is going to be captured for less time and therefore less light is allowed to be captured by the camera. ISO is one of the most important functions of a quality camera. There are certain cameras that allow you to shoot all the way up to 3200 without seeing a ton of grain in the image. And that's your base concern when adjusting the ISO is the grain that you see in your image. The Canon T3i generally you can't push it above 800 without seeing a lot of grain especially in the darker colors. So you need to be aware of what your camera can handle and and make sure that you're not shooting at an ISO that is higher than what your camera can regularly handle unless you absolutely have to in really dark lighting. Looking at the white balance the white balance is, is what tells the camera what the true white color in our scene is. And this changes when we're indoors, when we're outdoors, when we're in shade, when we're using artificial lighting. And so we need to always be aware that this is going to be changing and that we're adjusting accordingly. Because it's a live event, we're not going to always be able to get the white balance perfect because things are always moving around. We often don't have time to set up shots. And so if we're going to err, we want to err on the side of warmer white balance because it's a happy event. Generally, warmer colors convey a more happy emotion. Looking at the color profile, I like to shoot in the neutral, low contrast color profile because it allows me more options in post. We want to make sure that we know how to focus our cameras. This is one of the most important parts. So often I find that beginning videographers aren't aware of the focus assist feature, which allows us to really zoom in on our subject and make sure that we're capturing the focus and that the image looks sharp and crisp. And this is the focus is important because it draws the viewer's attention to a certain part of the screen and helps with our storytelling. And then white balance shift is important. This is a feature that you have to go into the menu for on most DSLRs. But what we want to do with the white balance shift is adjust so that our skin tone looks the most natural. 
So if someone's standing out on the grass, there's going to be a lot of green bounce from the grass. We want to adjust for that green bounce by going into our white balance shift and bringing out the green so that the skin tone looks as natural as possible. We also see weird reception lighting often if we have purple lights that give the skin an unnatural look and so we can adjust for these purple lights using the white balance shift as well. When we're shooting an event and we know that there's going to be a lot of movement, we don't want our depth of field to be so shallow that it's almost impossible to get anything into focus. We can see here that as we change our aperture, it's going to affect the depth of field and what is in focus. So if we have a lot of movement, we want to shoot at a higher aperture so that we have more focus and less likely to be capturing a good image during important events. Many cameras also allow us to gauge the levels on our image, which is great. We can click on the histogram and see the range of data that our image is capturing and then expose accordingly. Sometimes this can make the image look too dark on camera, but you can take a look at your histogram and see what information is actually being captured and then adjust in post to get an image that looks brighter. So reviewing the process that I go through when adjusting my settings for a given scene, especially for indoors, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the correct exposure. And so usually I default to an ap aperture that's one stop below the minimum. So if I'm shooting on an f1.8 lens, then I'm going to start off at f2.8. And then I'm going to adjust my shutter speed. If there's not a whole lot of movement, then I can bring it down to 1 over 80 or 1 over 100. And then I can finally adjust my ISO. And hopefully the ISO is going to be at a number that's less than what my camera tends to get noisy at. And then I'm going to go into my white balance and adjust the white balance for the shot so that we're seeing true whites in our scene. 